continue on in, what are we talking about here? Um, what we're going to talk about today is, um, last time we were on this, we were talking about the route to debt and money problems. Today, and it's continuing, but uh, I've entitled this message, God's Economy, okay? And I have to share with you because this has to do with God's economy. Um, Friday morning when, when I got up, the Lord put my eyes on, on this passage of, of Scripture. Um, well, he put my eyes on a whole lot of things. Because, y'all, the Holy Spirit is speaking. He is speaking through, through the Word, through the TV, through the songs that Pastor chooses. He, he is speaking a rhema word to everybody in here. If they have ears to hear. And what he told me, he said, knowing scripture is one thing. And it's a good thing. He said, knowing the author of scripture, totally different thing. Okay. Amen. Totally different. And what we are beginning to walk in is knowing the author, who is the Holy Ghost. That's the Holy Ghost, is the author that inspired men through history to write the word of God. But that was what he said to me. And with that paper that had that on there, it was right next to the scripture. And this is in Luke 4. And Luke 4, starting at verse 1, I wasn't on verse 1, but to begin the sentence, I had to turn over. And this is the, the wilderness temptation of Yeshua. And... If you notice, if you turn to verse 1, it says, And Yeshua, being full of the Holy Ghost, returned from Jordan. I know that Jordan, the definition of Jordan, is death. Wow. Zena, the definition of, of Jordan is death. He's been speaking to us about death, resurrection, all of this. And when I'm going, he returned. He returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit to be tempted in the wilderness, in the wilderness. So many people are crying because they feel like they're in the wilderness, but your faith is tested Amen. in the wilderness. Hallelujah. It is. It just is. It's not, it's not, well, hey, yeah, it can be tested on them. But when you feel like you're in the wilderness, that's when you're tested. That's when you're tested. And he said, look up the word Jordan. And I'm going, I know it means death. I know that. But the literal mean, meaning is a descender. A descender. And the Jordan is the principal river. And you know how we've been talking about rivers out of the Garden of Eden and, and all? The Jordan is the principal river that runs through, through Israel. Okay? And... When I looked at the Hebrew letters of that, see, there, there's so much to be to be said for the the pictures of the Hebrew alphabet, because and, and you know that the Hebrew alphabet has no vowels. Okay, so we're talking about not J but Y, and then R, D, and N. Okay. <laughs> What that literally says, and I won't be, belabor that, is you know that yud is the open hand. The open hand, R is resh, of the first, the first, firstborn, first in rank, time, is resh. The open hand of the first, D, is dalet, the door. The open hand of the first door, nun, is the fish symbol. Multiplication. Mm. Amen. So what the Lord is saying, can you, can you read that? Does that make sense to y'all? The open hand of the first door to multiplication. Mm. Hallelujah. Is wow. death. Okay. Is death. Hallelujah. And then the Holy Spirit said, what did the Apostle Paul say? I die daily. Yes. We are crucified with Christ nevertheless. We live, but it's not I that lives, but Christ that liveth in me. Okay? And Yeshua said, unless a seed fall to the ground and die, 
it abides alone. So I thought that that was, I didn't think it was interesting, I thought it was like flabbergasting because he said you have to pass the test of death, of going down. It's the first door. See, most people think to go up is elevation, but it's the first door to multiplication. Okay. Be fruitful, multiply, replenish. Okay? That's literally what that means in Hebrew. Okay? And you say, what does that have to do with what we're talking about in God's economy? And he, he took me to the temptation, which is right there in Luke 4. And what he said to me is you will be tested on every level. We're talking about finances. If you think you're just going to go to the pinnacle, it's not going to happen. Yeshua was tested on every level in the wilderness. And what he showed me was that he was tested first off in his identity. Okay. If you be the son of God, well just in the chapter prior, Yahweh had opened the heavens and said, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. Two seconds later, the devil is saying, if you be, he didn't even say beloved. And I'm here to tell everybody in this place today, you are beloved of the Father. You are accepted of, of the Father. That is your identity. That is your identity. But see, that was the base level because he said, if you be the Son of God, turn the stone into bread. So his identity was tested on the stone level. The next level was on a high mountain. See, you got to start here and be tested. When you pass that test, then you go to the high mountain. And y'all, the high mountain is where a lot of people are right now. Because when he took him up to the high mountain, the devil said, all this power, all this authority, and all this glory of the kingdoms of the, of the earth, Babylon, basically, he showed him in an instant. He said, all of this I'll give to you if you'll what? Worship. Bow down and worship me. And I heard the spirit of the Lord say, you cannot serve two masters. You cannot serve mammon and God. And that's what he was being tested on that. The glory, Satan said, I give you the glory of this world. Some of us are at that testing point now where we're going, okay, do I get the glory of the world or do I wait for the glory Amen. of the Lord? Hallelujah. And Yeshua responded, thou shalt not worship, or thou shalt worship the Lord thy God. Him only shall you bow down to and worship. Remember when the Hebrew children said, our God is able to deliver us, but even if he don't, we're still not going to bow. That's the story of Hanukkah. They fought because they would not bow. The priest would not bow. And that's where the fight started. Okay? So you'll be tested on that. That's the, the high mountain. So there's the stone level, there's the high mountain level, and then there's the pinnacle. The next one, it says that he took him to, the, the devil took Yeshua to the, the pinnacle of the temple. The temple. We are the temple now. So what he's saying, he's taking him to the high mountain, to the pinnacle of where you are. And he's saying, if you be the son of God, throw yourself down there. Go on, throw yourself down there. Because at the pinnacle, you will be tested, will you abort your purpose? Okay. And he even used scripture. He even used scripture, y'all. He said, it is written that the angels are given charge of, they'll bear you up. Go on and throw yourself down. That was the final test. That was the test of death. Suicide. At the, pin, at the top of your field. And it's funny because yesterday I kept seeing all of the movie stars that we had lost in 2013. Young people blowing their heads off at the pinnacle of their success. At the pinnacle of, of their success. And what was Yeshua's uh, remark to it? Because the devil was trying to get him to abort his purpose, which was the cross. Go ahead, kill yourself right now. You won't die 
because the angels will come. How many children as well as adults does he say that to? And Yeshua responded, get thee behind me, Satan. He said, thou shalt not test the Lord thy God. He was saying what I heard the Spirit of God saying, do not test the word of the Lord. Those of you that were here on Thursday, remember when I said I was waiting for the word to come before I came? And he said, you have my word. Amen. You don't need to test it. You have it. And his promise is good. And it says after that test, that was the test of are you going to believe God's word even in the face of death? Okay? And he says, and the devil departed from him. And the, verse 14 says, and Yeshua returned in the power, the power, the dunamis power of the Holy Ghost. And that's when he began his ministry. The next couple verses are when he said, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me. Okay? So, knowing that, that you will be tested. Y'all repeat with me. We repeat that for four. I am greatly blessed. I am greatly blessed. I am highly favored. I am highly favored. I am deeply beloved. I am deeply beloved. See, you need to know that before you start elevating where money is concerned, that you're blessed before you have a dollar if you're in Christ. You're deeply loved, not because of what you do, deeply beloved of the Father. Be loved. You just for because you're his. Because you're in Christ. Okay? Um, and you are highly favored. Highly favored. Not because of it. That's grace, y'all. It's not because of anything we did, but because what Christ did for us. Okay? All right. So, yes, ma'am. What? What? I am greatly blessed, highly favored, deeply beloved. Okay? All right. In continuation, um, today is 1215. The 15 in the Hebrew uh, language is the staff. Is the staff. A prop. A staff. Um, the, in Hebrew times, the staff, it, a shepherd's staff. Okay? On the staff, they... They notched in their victories with the Lord. They, they notched so they could look at the staff. And the, the staff made them remember their history with the Lord. Do you all have a history with God being with you? Victories that have been won in the past? Oh, yeah. It stands for support, protection, the power of presence. Remember when Moses had his staff and... God told him, you go before Pharaoh. Well, the wizards, they had staffs too. But the power of God's presence was on that staff. And it ate up the little wizard staff, the little snake things that they were doing. The power that we have with the presence of God, because we are in Christ, is greater than any power that they got out there. And when you, you think of the, of the word staff, what's the first thing you think of? His rod and his staff, they comfort me. We, we are talking about, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. The shoulder is where the strength of a man is. Where the strength of the man is. When I actually looked up shoulder, this is the part that it talked about right here. That's the source of strength. And what the definition said was the place that... They, you bear the burden. The Lord is my shepherd. The baby sheep go around. I shall not want. He makes me to lie down. He's carrying the, how many have seen the, the picture of the shepherds carrying? Carrying. Because there's protection there. Uh, even in the natural, women like to be on the shoulder of a man. We've got mostly ladies in here, is that true? Even Catherine was saying last week, she said, I like nice broad, not sloping shoulders, but nice strong. I like them too. 
And, uh, and I say, hey, how, because that it's a sense of, of strength, of protection. Amen. When a man puts his arm around a woman, and you, you say, well, I don't have a man. You got Yeshua. Amen. Even if you are a man. Amen. When he puts an arm around, uh, for me, I, that, I feel that's when I'm home. That's when I'm home. And underneath his wings will you trust. Amen. See, God is speaking everywhere. Even from a little girl saying, I like some nice shoulders. And I'm going, <laughs> how funny you would say that. Because the government is upon his shoulder. And in that same protection, support, power of presence, that's what we are called to be when the wealth transfer comes. In God's economy, because he says the government shall be upon his shoulder, and the shoulders are on the body of Messiah. They're not on the head. It's on the body. And that's why I've been, the authority is on the shoulder. It's on us. He came with it, and he put it on us. That's why I thought it was so, so interesting about uh, the, the single mother that has no man wanting to come here to find shelter, to find shelter in this body of Christ. Because that's our calling, y'all. That's our calling. And that's what God will make you wealthy for. If he knows that he can get the money through you Amen. to bear up the burdens of others, because that's what he did when he was here. Isn't that true? Isn't that true? Then he will funnel it. We're supposed to be a distribution center. Yes. 